Hello and welcome to King's Community Church Online. We're so happy that you could join us this morning and from wherever you're watching from, welcome. So we want to make sure you get the most out of everything we do today. So please say hi in the chat below. If you want access to the kids or youth YouTube channel, the links are above. And if you want prayer, please click on the prayer request button below. So we're now going to go live to the Hedge End site. So we hope you enjoy your morning with us. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to King's Community Church. It's great to see you this morning. Let me invite you as we start to stand up to your feet. We're going to start today by worshipping God together. So why don't you join in and sing with us. Amen. Let's worship Him. Sing, I see your face. I see your face in every sunrise the colors of the morning are inside your eyes the world awakens in the light of the day i look up to the skies and say you're beautiful In the moonlit night Where planets are in motion And galaxies are bright We are amazed in the light of the stars It's all proclaiming who you are Cause you're beautiful Let's declare His beauty together this morning I see you there I see you there Hanging on a tree You bled and then you died And then you rose again for me Now you are sitting on your heavenly throne Soon we will be coming home Cause you're beautiful God, you are worthy of praise. 
It's great to be together today. We are here to declare the beauty, the splendour, the glory of our God. Great to be here at Hedge End. Really warm welcome if you're with us online as well. Really warm welcome to if you are normally part of our Totten site. We are all together this morning. I was going to... I was going to ask you to wave and cheer. You've already done it. It's great to be together. We've got over a hundred of our youth as well in the New Forest. They are having a great time encountering God. And it's we are going to do in a moment. It's really good as well to have Steve, Steve Brading, his wife Ruth with us. They're from Emmanuel Church in Brighton. They're based there. And Steve is going to be preaching to us in a little while. But before we do that, we're going to join our voices with all these singers and we are going to declare that our God is worthy. Let's start to lift up our voices. God, you are worthy. God, we declare it right now at the start of this meeting, at the start of this day. We love you. You are beautiful. You are glorious. We lift our voices to you and we worship you. Amen.
on from encountering you, knowing you more, hearing you speak to us. Let's just stay in this place of worship. I want to lift out your hand. This is a way of showing that we want to receive this morning. King Jesus, yours is the name we're lifting high. Your glory. Come like a rushing wind. for children for you to go to your groups this morning just as we're experiencing God's presence in here we pray that you encounter God as you go if you need help with where to go this morning just ask someone in one of the welcome t-shirts they'll point you in the right direction let's continue to fix our eyes on Jesus declare his name the one who's glorified
sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb has overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb has overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb has overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb. I just felt um, God put up my heart just to share a little story that happened this week, just to um, to encourage you guys. Um, just as we we're singing "Spirit Break Out," I felt that God was saying, "I want to empower you as you step out." That the Holy Spirit wants to move through us through power, signs, and miracles as we evangelize and we share Jesus and the gospel with people. But anyway, so me and Meg were uh, were at the gym a couple of days ago, and it's really late workout session, like midnight. And we just thought, do it for a laugh. We just felt we'd do it. Anyway, there was a cleaner who was um, walking by and, uh, and we saw her and we just thought, you know, we, we, we feel like God, God wants to move, you know, and he wants to say something to us. So we, we just were chatting to her like normal people. And anyway, she told us that she had carpal tunnel. Um, and so we were like, oh, we'd love to pray for you. And, and, and you know, we, we believe that God wants to heal you, he loves you, and, and we'd love to just pray for you. That's okay. And she was like, yeah. Um, and about two or three prayers, she would said it's literally, she was like, I had numbness, it's completely gone, the pain's gone. Um, that's really weird, that never happens. Um, and she, so she opened her heart to Jesus a bit. She didn't give her life there, but we sowed a seed and, we, uh, and we, we're going to talk to her more um, in the next few weeks. But yeah, God, God loves you and, and, and remember what he's put on your heart for people and let that, let that see you move in the miracle signs and wonders as the Holy Spirit will surround life through you. That is so good. I love stories like that. Let's just stay in this place of God encountering us. Um, Peter from Totten came up to me at the, at the start of the meeting, said he had a word of knowledge with somebody with pain today, really intense pain in their neck and their, their shoulder. And actually I said to Peter, well, uh, that, that's me actually. And he prayed for me and I feel like the tension in my shoulder that was there has really gone. But it may well be others here too. So. You know, we have sung this morning of Jesus giving hope. We have sung this morning of Jesus pouring out his Holy Spirit and giving his Holy Spirit. We have sung this morning of Jesus giving his life for us, that all the wrong things we've done can be forgiven and we can know God. And Jesus comes and Jesus rescues. Jesus brings healing. If you've got neck pain, shoulder pain today, or any other pain in, or illness, just lift your hand to him. Or if you're watching online, press the request prayer button. We would love to pray. Now, Jesus... 
You are the giver of all good things. We look to you in faith and we pray healing. We pray rescue. We thank you that in you there is hope. In you there is good news. There is freedom. Jesus, we thank you that we can come into your presence, that we encounter you today. Stir faith in our hearts from that story Josh and Meg shared. Stir faith in our hearts to go out and pray for the sick and pray for the lost and pray for those that need rescue. God, we thank you for all that you're doing. Amen. Amen. Please take a seat, but we're going to stay in this place of worship. We've sung of all that God has given to us and you know we've given our worship we've sung our songs of worship today but we can also give into our offering that is another way that we we give our worship we demonstrate our worship to God saying God we want to prioritize you God we trust that you will provide for our every need and you can give today using the details that are coming up on the screen there And everything that you give, it goes towards our work here in the Solent and and across the nations God has called us to. And you know, if you were here last week as well, another way that we give is we give our time as well. And last week we launched our, our Teams Sunday, what we've called Teams Sunday. And the reason that we are doing this is because we've heard God say recently, make room. Do you know there were 20 people on our last Alpha course. There are 25 people on a current Alpha course. That deserves a little bit of a cheer. There are over 100 people that have done Explore Church over the last 12 months. Many of them are here today and are are watching online. Yeah, you can clap that as well. We can celebrate these these things. And we we are asking everyone in the church right now, what are my gifts? What are my passions? What has God called me to do as we serve? This is not about busying up our time. This is not about we've just had 16 months of lockdown and we are looking for things to do again. This is in response to the word of God. Make room because God is moving. And so as we look towards two meetings in October, we want to make room for many more people to come and encounter the love of God. We want to grow our welcome team, our car parking team, so that when people come here, they experience the love of God and they feel at home here. We want to grow our kids' work and our youth work so young people hear the good news of Jesus. We want to grow our our prayer team here and in Totten uh, as well so that when people respond, there are people to stand with them and pray and see God move. I want to thank all of you that have signed up to be part of a team over this last week and you will already have heard back from somebody. But if you've not yet signed up, you can do so using the cards that are on the chairs here, using the QR code that's on the screen, or if you're on the tiers, there's a QR code uh, on the back of the seats there that you can sign up or just email the office. Let's respond to what God is saying to us. Let's respond to all the great things that God is doing. Let's make room for people to come here, experience the love of God, and have their lives transformed by the good news that Jesus saves. Amen? Amen. It's my great pleasure to welcome Steve Brading. He's going to come and preach to us. We're just going to hear our Bible reading for the day, and then uh, uh, Steve is going to come and preach. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. This is the message from the one who is holy and true, the one who has the key of David. What he opens, no one can close, and what he closes, no one can open. I know all the things you do, and I have opened a door for you that no one can close. You have little strength, yet you obeyed my word and did not deny me. Look, I will force those who belong to Satan's synagogue, those liars who say they are Jews but are not, to come and bow down at your feet. They will acknowledge that you are the ones I love. Because you have obeyed my command to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take away your crown. All who are victorious will become pillars in the temple of my God, and they will never have to leave it. And I will write on them the name of my God, and they will be citizens in the city of my God, the new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Great. 
Great, good morning everybody. It's great to be with you in Southampton. Holds a special place for me, Southampton and Hedge End. And uh, we're looking particularly at the book of Revelation and we're looking at the letters which Jesus writes to the church. And the letter we're looking at is Philadelphia and it's one of only two letters where there is nothing negative to say. So you can all breathe a sigh of relief, nothing negative to say. And uh, I want to just read the first couple of verses. I know we had the reading there, but I just want to underline, and then we get into it. It says, To the angel of the church at Philadelphia, or to Hedge End, write this, The words of the Holy One, the True One, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut who shuts and no one opens. Behold, I've set before you an open door which no one is able to shut. Can you say amen? Amen. Wonderful passage. I want to address this passage under three headings. And the first heading is this, is opportunity. The verse says, Behold, I set before you an open door which no one can shut. And the first door, which is clearly open, is the door of opportunity. Now, in the Bible, when it speaks about open doors, in the New Testament, it primarily means two things. It, first of all, it means the door of salvation. Jesus said this. He said, enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and many, many find it. He says, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life and those who find it are few. The reason I love coming to the Southampton area is because 50 years ago I was at university. I know I don't look that old, but I was at university, 1970. And in Southampton, I became a Christian. I entered through that narrow door. I entered through that narrow gate. Jesus said it is hard. I found it's been hard, yeah. My friends sort of thought I'd turned a bit funny. But I found that it was the doorway to life and peace and joy. And I've been serving Jesus for 50 years, and it's very, very exciting. And Jesus has opened the door by virtue of his death on the cross. I came to Southampton thinking I was one of the lads, I was okay. I suddenly realized that I was offending God by the way I lived. I was a sinner. I needed to get right with God. I realized Jesus had died for my sin on the cross of Calvary as he's died for yours. And that through his death, he'd opened a doorway and was now beckoning me, a door of opportunity. Come in, walk through Steve Brading. I walked through that door over 50 years ago, and it's been the best move I've ever made in my life. It is a wonderful door to pass through. Maybe you're watching today. Maybe you've never passed through that door of salvation. Enter through that door. Behold, I set before you an open door which no one can shut. Are you ready to walk through that door, the door of salvation? But not only is it the door of salvation, it is also the doorway to service. Because once a person becomes a Christian, they find something happens inside them. They find that the Holy Spirit starts to stir them and move them. And they find that they're concerned for their friends. They're concerned for their family. They're concerned for the place where they live. They're concerned for their colleagues, like the man who came here and just spoke and said that he prayed for that person. That was wonderful, wonderful testimony. I thought, well done. That's exactly what I believe God is wanting to um, say here this morning. Paul said this. He says, a wide open door has been set before me. A wide open door. And he was talking about the door of opportunity for the gospel. A wide open door. Mark Sayers, who is quite a well-known Australian preacher, bit of a sort of a prophetic philosopher type preacher, very, very clever guy. He said this recently, he believed that through COVID-19, 
that God was opening an open door to evangelism like we've never known. He said, particularly in Europe, when since the age of reason and the age of enlightenment, a God has been erective of sort of reason and understanding and control. We're in control. We're masters of our own destiny. Suddenly that has crashed. And that God has fallen. And now there's an open door. And we need to walk through that with the opportunity for the gospel. It was through COVID-19 that one of my neighbors has recently got saved. We've been in the same house now for five years. I believe when God puts us in a house, it's for the benefit of those around us. We've been praying consistently for our neighbors. We've had the chance to pray with seven of them. Not all for salvation, but we've had the chance to pray for seven of them for various needs. One lady, her cat disappeared. My wife prayed that her cat would come back. And her cat came back and she was overwhelmed. We've prayed for all sorts of needs. But one man recently went into hospital with quite a serious illness, very serious. His wife came knocking on our door in tears. She said, I don't think I'll ever see him again. He sent a message back. He said, I I don't think I'll ever come out of here. He said, I'm seriously ill. My immune system's down. He said, there's a very high chance I'll catch COVID. And I sent him a text spelling out, David, this is what it means to become a Christian. This is what it means. It's time for you to take that step of faith. I felt I had to do that because I might never see him again. He sent me back a text saying, Steve, I've got a lot on my plate. I don't think I'm ready for this. And I thought, Steve, you fool. Why have you done that? But I did what I felt God tell me to do. The next day, he sent me another text saying, Steve, in the middle of the night, I prayed through every step of the text that you sent me. He said, I've prayed and asked Jesus to help me in my hour of need. He has read through Matthew's gospel, he's read through Mark's gospel, he's read through Luke's gospel, he's read through John's gospel, he's on the Alpha course, and he's watching Sunday services in our local church every week with his wife. Hallelujah. God is powerfully on the move. I pray every week with Terry Virgo for revival. Terry came the other day and he said this. He said that one nurse in their church had got saved through going on an Alpha course. One nurse. She invited 11 of her friends to come on the next Alpha course. 11 friends, one nurse. And last week she got baptized and 20 of her friends were there. Beloved, God is opening a door for us, a door of opportunity. Behold, I set before you an open door that no one can shut. It's a door of opportunity, I believe. I saw online about Holy Trinity Brompton, that on their Alpha course they'd seen the numbers treble. There is, my friends, I believe, a door of opportunity which is available to us now, even at this stage, this vulnerable, vulnerable stage in our history. But not only is it a door of opportunity, it is a door also of authority. Because Jesus said this, he says, all authority in heaven and on earth is given to me, now therefore go. And you go in that authority. And you go, and what do you do? You make disciples of all nations. You go with that authority. When we look at the church here, we find in Philadelphia, not only did they have opportunity, but they also had obstacles. And they had three major obstacles. They had, first of all, they had a sense of little power. We are so weak. We are so insignificant. There's so few of us. They felt insignificant. I know many people who've just felt insignificant in the face of their friends and their family and others. Join the club. Join Philadelphia. That's exactly how they felt. Not only that, but there was fierce opposition, particularly coming from the Jewish quarter. Fierce opposition. Not only that, but there was a threat of persecution. I know many people who've said, oh well, we're so insignificant. It's such a a difficult message. Discretion is the better part of valor. Oh, just keep quiet. There's a time to speak. There's a time to keep quiet. Now's the time to keep quiet. I will keep quiet. 
I find that that sort of reasoning does not seem to impress Jesus one little bit. He says this, he says, Behold, I've set before you an open door and no one can shut it. That's what I've done. No one can shut it. And the reason is because he holds the key, the authority to that door. And he's looking for people who would dare to walk through that door. Not only that, but he says this. He said, I will even cause those of Satan's synagogue to come and fall at your feet, not in worship, but in acknowledgement that God is clearly among you. You say, I'm put off, there's opposition, there's difficulty. Oh, yes, that's how it is. Paul says this, he says, an open door, a wide open door has opened for me, but there are many adversaries. That's how it is. There's opportunity, but we go with that authority and we see those obstacles overcome as we go. And the way we do that, the way we do that is through prayer and through faith. That's how we actually exercise the authority which Christ has given us. We pray. Your prayers aren't just bouncing off the ceiling. No, we pray in faith. God breaks through. God breaks through. I wouldn't commend anybody for just blundering in, just being clumsy. I think a lot of people have been put off just through folks just blundering in and being clumsy. Let's pray. Let's be wise. Let's be sensitive to the Holy Spirit like the man was saying earlier who was saying, Lord, if you've got something, show us. And he said, right, this is a time. Great. Let's be sensitive, not just belligerent. Let's be as sensitive to God, the Holy Spirit, and walk and obey his promptings and do what he tells us to do. We enter through this doorway of authority with prayer and with faith. One morning in our devotions, my wife and I we read, not together, separately and independently, we read about Jackie Pullinger, who prayed for 15 minutes a day in tongues in the walled city in Hong Kong. And she prayed because God had told her to do that. And she noticed that after six or seven weeks that amazing things were happening. Doors of opportunity were opening. And she saw many of the gang leaders, the triad leaders and the drug dealers and barons turn to Jesus. That's what she saw. We decided to do that. We decided some time ago that we would <clears throat> pray in tongues. And by the way, the gift of tongues is a very powerful weapon, and it's how we can exercise the authority of God. We decided to pray in tongues for 15 minutes a day. And amazing things started to happen. I went out for a walk. I found people started to approach me. I went out for a walk. We got to a beauty spot, and this lady came up to me. She said, you come here often? She was actually one of the rangers, so that was nothing unusual. She was one of the rangers, and we got chatting. I noticed that she was talking to another man. He got a disabled sticker on his car. I said, why, why are you disabled? He said, oh, I've got a problem in, with my nerves in the back of my neck. And I said, how long has that been? 20 years. I said, oh. And I felt prompted to pray. I said, I'm a church leader. I'd love to pray for you. He got straight out of his car and stood up. I said, what has happened? He said, I, have you ever heard of the Townsend Tourism ship which went down? He said, I was on it. He said, it sailed, and he said, the bow doors were open, the ship went up, and then suddenly went right down. He said, there was water way, way, way above us. He said, I managed to climb up because the chairs were anchored to the floor, bolted to the floor. I used them like a ladder. There were five of his family. He lost his two brothers. His mother was with him, she survived. He lost his sister-in-law. And out of this time, <clears throat> five had been away for a day, only two had come back. And he'd been absolutely desperate ever since. I said, I'd like to pray for you. He pulled out a cross from around his neck and said, I, I cling on to this all the time. My friends, we need to cling on to Jesus. We need to cling on to him. I don't know whether he was a believer or not, but I pray with him. Meanwhile, my wife 
was with the lady. Her son had recently died in a car crash, 27 years old. There are desperate people everywhere waiting for us. We went on holiday to Tembe. I'm sitting in a cafe and a, a lady kept looking at me, looking at me like this and smiling. I looked around. She looked at me and kept smiling. And then she leaned over and she said, excuse me. I said, yes. She said, you look the spitting image of my granddad. <laughs> oh, thank you. What a compliment. <laughs> And it immediately came to my mind about the Welsh Revival. Was he in the Welsh Revival? Was he um, a Christian man? So she said, oh yes, he was very religious. He used to go to church and believe in God. And I'm sure he was there. I said, and what about you? And she looked. She said, oh, you're quite direct, aren't you? I said, oh, yes. <laughs> what about you? And she said, well, I, I know I'm a good person. And then the conversation went on. I walked down the beach. And I could see this man sitting on a rock on his own. And I knew that he'd recently been bereaved. He was about 80. Reminded me of a friend of mine who'd recently been bereaved. He just had this dog that was jumping in and out the sea. I stopped and chatted with him. I said, lovely dog, nice sitting. And then he said, I, I've recently been bereaved. And I, I said, was your wife a believer? Did she go to church? She said, oh yes, she was quite, she used to go quite, every Sunday, quite religious in his words. I said, and what about you? He said, well, I, I didn't really have time for it. And then it all opened up about eternal life. I managed to give him one of my personal tracts. I've got some here this morning. I gave him my personal tract, which tells him how I became a Christian. He started to read it, and I left him. He was reading it through. There are desperate people, desperate people everywhere in every setting. They are waiting for you and they're waiting for me to pray and go with sensitivity, but with love and with care to a needy, to a bleeding, and to a dying world. I'll give you one of these at the end if you want. You can write your personal story. I could tell you many stories. Ruth found the same thing at work. She found that she was praying for people that situations were opening up to her. And it's because we were praying and seeking God. You see, we walked through this doorway. We walked through it with faith and with prayer. The church at Philadelphia was in a strategic location. They were on one of the main arterial roads or great trunk roads of the Roman Empire. And if the gospel spread from them, it would soon penetrate. You as a church are in a strategic location. You're strategically placed. You're strategically placed on the motorways. You're strategically placed with the port. You're strategically placed in your home and in your family. And the reason you're there is not just to go along and have a nice time, which is wonderful. The reason we're there is for the community. That we would pray and say, God, break in. When we were in Hastings, I knocked on the door of my neighbor's house and said, would you like to come to this meeting? He said, no! He went bright red and he slammed the door in my face. My next door neighbor. I said to Ruth, we're going to pray and he either gets saved or he moves. <laughs> we prayed in six months time. He knocked on my door and he said, um, we're all, we just want to, you to know we're moving. I've, we're moving. We prayed for the family who came there that they'd be open to the gospel. A Chinese family moved in there who ran the Chinese restaurant. The lady came to us, Betty, came on a Sunday to church. She got saved into the kingdom of God. Her family got saved into the kingdom of God. They started a Bible study in the very house where the man slammed the door in my face. You see, God says, I've set before you an open door that no one can close. There are obstacles, but come on. We're in a war. We are on the winning side. We need to press through with faith and with prayer and with perseverance. Can you say amen? amen. So it's a door of opportunity. It's a door of authority and then lastly it is a door of security eternal security 
We're told in this verse that Jesus is the one who holds the key of the door. What is this door? What is this key of David? The key of David was this. It was the key that the administrator held. You can read about it in the book of Isaiah. Who opened the vaults to the treasure troves of Israel. The gold, the silver, the wine, the precious stones, the oil. And it finds its fulfillment in Jesus Christ who opens the door of heaven so that we as believers in Christ can inherit the riches of heaven. That's how it finds its fulfillment. And there are three magnificent promises which are given here about eternal security to those who dare press through in this life. The first is this, that if you keep my word, I will keep you. I will keep you from the hour of trial. It's not that it will disappear, but God will keep you as you press through. He won't deliver you from the the suffering. He'll deliver you through it. He'll be your strength. He'll be your help. He'll be your guide. If you keep my word, I will keep you. Secondly, this, that if you become a pilgrim in this life for the purposes of Jesus, he will make you a pillar in the next, a pillar in the purposes of God. You know, we don't talk much about the reward in the Christian life, but I find Jesus talks about it here. I'll make you a pillar. Paul talks about it. He says, I've run the race. I've kept the faith. There's now laid up for me a crown which the righteous judge will award me on that day. If you keep my word, I will keep you. If you become a pilgrim, you will be made a pillar. And then thirdly this, and I will write on you a name. In fact, three names. Belonging to the Father, belonging to the Son, the Son of God, belonging to the people of God. You know, when we come to the book of Revelation to the very end, a lovely song that we started with was all about that time, seeing his face. It says this in Revelation, the new heaven and the new earth. No longer will there be anything accursed, but God, the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it. His servants will worship him. They will see his face and his name will be written on their foreheads and they will reign with him forever and ever and ever. Behold, I set before you an open door. No one can close it. It's the doorway of opportunity, of authority, and it's the doorway of eternal security. God bless you. Amen. Shall we stand together?
breath Till the two was moved for good For the land has conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in love For the souls of those who come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born And the Spirit lit the flame For this gospel truth of all Shall not kneel, shall not faint By His blood and in His name In His freedom I am free For the love of Jesus Christ Who has resurrected me love what Steve brought to us today. I love that testimony from Josh earlier. And there's, a, there's an opportunity to come to God today, to come to God if you don't know Jesus, to come to God and we'd love to chat to you about what Jesus rescues us from, how Jesus puts our relationship with God right. There's an opportunity to come to Jesus today if you need healing. I'd just like you to hear one other outstanding story of what happens when we come to God. This is Sophie. Sophie, tell us your story. Yeah, at the beginning of the year, I was diagnosed with a autoimmune disease, which is a long-term disease, and was told that I would basically be on medication or need operations for the rest of my life. And we just weren't winning through with my medication. My levels were either off the charts too high or off the charts too low. And I was either in bed and kind of bed bound or just through the roof. And a few weeks ago, a group of women stood by me and they prayed for me and they laid their hands around the source of um, this autoimmune disease. And uh, last week, I was supposed to have an appointment with my consultant and she phoned me in the morning. She was like, Sophie, um, I, I need to cancel your appointment. She said, for the first time on record, your bloods have come back normal. She said, there is no need for you to come and see me. It's, it's absolutely fine and I will see you in six months time. Um, I believe that that is God. I believe that that was God breaking through. I knew. <laughs> see, that's what happens when we make the most of that opportunity the opportunity is there this morning to come before god whatever your situation but when we make that move we see god move just uh if that's you this morning that wants to respond just hold your hands out now if there's something in your life i just want to pray Jesus, move in this situation. As we lift our situations, our sicknesses, our whatever it might be, Jesus, we ask that you come in and that you move. If you're watching online this morning, again, let me encourage you. We can take this opportunity to come before God by hitting the request prayer button. Someone will pray for you. There's already a number of people that have been prayed for online today. I just want to pray for all of us. God, make us bold in what you've called us to. Bold to share the good news of the gospel. Bold to pray in faith and with the expectancy that you are going to move. God, I pray this time next week there will be many more stories of you healing, Lord God, and you breaking into situations. God, I pray for each of us. Make us alert to what is going on around us and stir our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's been great to be together today. 
We have encountered God today. Every Wednesday evening in August at 7 p.m., we are going to be meeting here to spend some time encountering God outside on the grass if it's, uh, if it's sunny there. 7 to 8 p.m., it's open to children as well. Time to worship it, to press in in prayer as Steve has encouraged us to do. Uh, so love to see you 7 p.m. starting this, this Wednesday here at our KCC Hedge End site. It's time to close our meeting now. If you've got uh, children, please go and collect your children straight away as we've overrun uh, a little bit. But great to be together. Great to see how God has moved amongst us. Have a great week and see you next Sunday. We've now come to the end of this meeting. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. If you still want prayer, there's still time to click on the prayer request button and someone will pray along with you. And maybe you've been joining for a few Sundays now or this is your first time and you want to find out more about how you could be a part of KCC, please fill out the connect form below and someone will be in touch with you. Thank you so much for joining us and have an amazing week. the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. As he opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. Come on, let's join. Let's join in the house of the Lord. Let's join in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout Let's join in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place And we won't be quiet We shout out your praise Oh, we shout out your praise We sing We sing to the God who heals We sing to the God who saves We sing to the God who always makes a way Cause he hung up on that cross And he rose up from that grave My God still rolling stones away Let's join Let's join in the house of the Lord Let's join in the house of the Lord today And we won't be quiet We shout out your praise Let's join Accepted, redeemed by His grace Let the house of the Lord sing praise Sing now, we were the beggars Cause we were the beggars Now we're royalty We were the prisoners Now we're running free Cause we are forgiven Accepted, redeemed by His grace Let the house of the Lord Be quiet, we shout out your praise. Let's join in the house of the Lord. Let's join in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Let's join in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. Cause we shout out your praise. Shout out
things you've done before in greater measure you will do again cause there's no